you talk about, uh, in all seriousness, yeah. insofar as, as we talk about politeness, which will be an interesting thing in this campaign going forward, uh, you talk about civic grace and you talk about courageous empathy. Can you speak a little bit to what you mean by those ideas and also the difficulty in expressing those, in practicing those at a time I, where the opponent will likely not yeah, be using Yeah, I mean, those. look... I was running on a uh, Iowa stage, and we were so psyched. Hundreds of people there. I'm about to jump up, and this guy sees me, the former tight end from Stanford University. He's a big guy. He puts his arm around me, and he goes, dude, I want you to punch Donald Trump in the face. And I stop in my tracks, and I go, dude, that's a felony, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, 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 this, uh, Donald Trump is a guy who you understand he hurts you. And, you, and my testosterone sometimes makes me want to uh, uh, feel like punching him and uh, which would be bad for this elderly, out of shape man that he is if yeah. I did that. Uh, um, uh, this physically, also, physically weak specimen. Also, a physically weak specimen. But, but, but you see what I'm talking there? Even that, that's his tactics. And you don't beat a bully like him, fighting him on his tactics, on his terms, using his turf. He's the body shamer. He's the guy that shows, tries to drag people in the gutter. And I, this is a moral moment in America. And to me, it, it, what we need from our next leader, especially after the time of moral vandalism that we're in right now, is we need a leader that's not going to call us to the worst of who we are, but call us to the best of who we are. And we need to be, as a party, um, uh, uh, in this moral moment, we need not to talk about necessarily what we're against, but what we're for. And the best way of looking at this is just our history. The gardens of our democracy have never been free of the weeds of bigotry, hatred, a demagoguery. Every generation has had them. I, I, I literally had one of, uh, elder uh, friend of mine text me saying, listening to Donald Trump's rally last week, that he was talking, the words he was using reminded him of a George Wallace rally that he watched in black and white, now it's in living color. But how did we beat them before? First of all, don't mistake strength for, uh, to, to be strong you need to be mean. We beat Bull Connor, for example, in Birmingham, not by bringing bigger dogs and bigger fire hoses and bring, matching his demagoguery with more, but these were incredible artists of activism that called to the moral imagination of a country, that called us to a greater a revival of that civic grace that pulled black folks and white folks and, and more folks together that relegated that demagogue uh, to the ash sheep of history. We will not beat Donald Trump by trying to be more like him, but by showing that we are not like him. We are not weak morally. We are not weak mentally. We are a strong nation, and we're a nation that unites. It does seem like, obviously, it's going to be a difficult undertaking uh, for uh, whoever the nominee is to take back the White House. It might even be more statistically difficult for the Democratic Party to take back the Senate. So let's say you're in the White House, uh, but Mitch McConnell is still running the Senate. Uh, where does where can you find any optimism to think that you can get something done as long as Mitch McConnell, uh, who has been incredibly effective, no matter what you think about him, uh, in, in effective in, in sort of having this Republican platform that has, has, has been a wall that's been impossible to break So through. that's the distinction of my record. Look, I, I was a mayor of New Jersey's largest city in the middle of a recession where people told me what we couldn't do. And now from transforming our school system to the biggest period of economic development in six years, we got things done people said couldn't be done. I got to the Senate. One of the things that drove me there was the fact that we have one of the most shameful criminal justice systems on the planet where we say we're the land of the free, but we incarcerate 25% of the globe's incarcerated people. And I went there to do something about it. And I remember people in my own party telling me, you're never gonna get legislation like this passed through the United States Senate, especially freeing people from prison at a time in the aftermath of Willie Horton where everybody's gonna be afraid to do that. Well, with Mitch McConnell there, I led from the Democratic side a bill that not only got passed, but right now, last week, we saw thousands of people being released, the overwhelming majority of them being African Americans. This is the first step. This uh, is the first step act. And so I do not resign myself ever to, 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 to people saying things can't get done. And what, why I fight so hard in this election, I tell people, I know that the number one thing people want in my party is just to beat Donald Trump. And I'm like, that is a floor, it is not the ceiling. We have to have bigger aspirations. If we make this election all about him, that's a small man, one office, th that's not what I want this election to just be about. We will beat him, I will beat him, but we've gotta make this more of a movement election to create new American majorities. And I'm not talking about democratic majorities, but the fact of the matter is we actually agree on more than we disagree. The lines that divide us 
they're, they're not as big as a lot the, the ties that bind us. And so I think our generation now in this election, in this moral moment has to begin uh, uh, not to resign ourselves to fractured, broken government, but aspire to do what our ancestors did. We just came off a weekend where they created the new American majority to defy the limits of, of human potential and put a person on the moon. It's time for our generation to begin to reject divisive tribalistic politics and, and inspire people so that we in our generation can defy gravity as well and do the things that other people think are impossible. All right, well, thanks for making the time. I know it's got to be busy out there. Thank you. Best of luck in the next yeah, round of debates. You. That's Cory Booker, everybody.